gold mining to generate 250,000 jobs in Nigeria. Inflation rises to highest points in more than two years. Federal government sets up campaign team for Okonjo Iwala. Plus, Asia-Pacific stocks mostly higher following Thursday's plunge in mainline Chinese shares. The program is Business Express on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority, the NTA. And we are reaching you from Abuja, the nation's capital. I am Muplang Dakok. It's good to know that you're always tuned to Business Express. We begin with latest figures from the National Bureau of Statistics, which shows that the consumer price index increased by 12.56% year on year in June 2020. Leah Katung Babatunde has details of the figures. The increase is 0.16% higher than the 12.4% recorded in May 2020. On a month-on-month -month basis, the headline index increased by 1.21% in June, 0.04% higher than the 1.17% recorded in May. The urban index rose by 1.23% on a month-on-month -month basis, while the rural index rose by 1.19%. The composite food index rose by 15.18% in June 2020, with the highest monthly record coming from Kogi, Benue and Zamfara states. Ondo, Anambra and Liga states recorded the slowest rise in the price of food items on a monthly basis. The rise in the food index was caused by increases in prices of bread and cereals, potatoes, yam and other tubers, fruits, oils and fat, meat, fish and vegetables. The federal government says improved gold mining operations in the country will generate about 250,000 jobs and more than $500 million annually in royalties and taxes to the federal government. President Muhammadu Buhari stated this at the official presentation of locally mined gold bars by the Presidential Artisanal Gold Mining Development Initiative, where he also reaffirmed his administration's commitment to establish gold refineries in Nigeria. While stressing that the Laudable initiative would support efforts at the creation of jobs for Nigerians, diversifying the revenue base and improving foreign exchange reserves, the president reiterated the determination of the federal government to combat illegal mining activities and expressed concern that Nigeria lost close to $3 billion from 2012 to 2018 due to illegal smuggling of gold. Need to support arsenal miners in improving the standard of the gold that will be sold to the central bank in order to ensure that they meet international benchmarks. Presently, we had to take this gold that's been aggregated out of the country for refinement. The ministry has licensed two private sector participators in gold refinery. The CBN governor notes that Nigeria will no longer be analyzed through the price of crude oil as gold is also valued in the international market in dollars. Analyze Nigeria is to say well, what is the price of crude. They will now begin to see that at this time when the price of crude is low and the price of gold is rising, that the Nigerian economy remains strong, 
Nigerian economy remains resilient to withstand the exogenous shock that we see around us today. With the implementation of the scheme, which will result in the setup of accredited gold buying centers across key mining areas, artisanal miners and SMEs engaged in mining will be able to capture the value of their work. When we return, economic benefits as Nigeria refines its own gold will be in focus. Let me assure Nigerians that all COVID-19 intervention funds are safe in the Treasury single account and that government is still open to donations in this regard. Government has opened special accounts with five commercial banks which are directly linked to the Treasury single account. Donated funds are safe in the Central Bank of Nigeria. For verifiable information about the funds and other financial obligations of the federal government, please contact us directly at the Federal Ministry of Finance, Budget and National Planning. The account details for the donations are as follows. To discuss the economic benefits as Nigeria refines its own gold and starts stockpiling for foreign reserves is the President, Miners Association of Nigeria, Kabiru Mohammed. You're welcome to Business Express. Thank you. Nice having you. All right. So Nigeria has started mining its own gold. Yes. And it has even met the standard of the London Bullion Market Association, which requires that at least 12.5 kilogram of gold should be kept in the reserve. Yes. What do you make of this development? Uh, uh, thank you so much. This is a milestone. Okay. Uh, a dream come true. Mm -hmm. As far as the mining activity is concerned in Nigeria, mm -hmm. uh, we can now beat our chest and say yes, we the miners, most of us being artisanal and small scale, uh, can do something and can contribute to the economic well-being of the country, most especially during this period of economic diversification uh, of the federal government. Okay. Very quickly, uh, do you think uh, um, mining is positioned well enough to contribute its own quota to Nigeria's GDP? Uh, well, if you say well enough, mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to say yes. Okay. But it's, uh, it's, po it's positioning. Okay. It's positioning itself in such a way that very soon uh, it will take the position of where oil used to be in this country, mm -hmm. uh, at a point where the government can now beat itself and say, okay, we now have another source of revenue, mm -hmm. which can give us the, the, the desired uh, GDP uh, uh, volume that we are looking for as far as economic uh, and revenue generation is concerned. Okay. Uh, we are happy with what the present government is doing. Okay. It is key in, it has now, it's like, it's like the awakening. Uh, the sector has been comatose for quite some decades. Okay. Uh, since past governments have not been so uh, uh, so nice mm -hmm. to the sector. Okay. Uh, they abandoned the sector, forgetting that it was the initial source of revenue for the Nigerian government at uh, independence. Mm -hmm. uh, when the oil boom came, uh, the whole governments forgot about the, the, the solid mineral sector forgetting that it is another aspect where some other industrialized worlds today, okay. even if they have oil, they still make sure that they harness that sector and put it in the right uh, position okay. for the rainy day. Okay. We have now reached the rainy day now, okay. and uh, the government uh, is now running Helter Skelter, and we appreciate what the president is doing, and we are asking him to do more. All right, the president said that um, this will generate and expected 250,000 jobs in Nigeria. How feasible do you see that? It's very feasible, not just 250,000. Okay. It can generate millions. He is dreaming of taking about a, a 10 million, mm -hmm. 
mm. Nigerians out, out of, of poverty. Uh, poverty. This sector will help him a lot, will help the government a lot, it will help Buhari administration a lot okay. uh, because it is a sector that employs so much, mm. so much, so many hands. Uh, provided the right uh, position, the positioning of the sector mm. is uh, being made in terms of uh, funding, mm. in terms of infrastructure, in terms of equipment and technological uh, technology uh, input, okay. uh, I think we can go a long way. Okay. Um, do you think that uh, with this development that uh, illegal mining is going to be reduced drastically in Nigeria? Because, for instance, uh, we're made to understand from a UN report that close to $3 billion of um, illegal gold was mined out of Nigeria between 2012 and 2018. Do you see this checking this illegal mining? Yes, uh, I think what, what, what the government is, is, is doing now, the, the, the position is taken, is, uh, is, is a position that we have always advocated for. Uh, we have tried to look at where are the leakages okay. and let the leakages be blocked so that maximum revenue can be generated. And one of the leakages is uh, the, the, the illegal uh, mining and the illegal uh, smuggling of this, uh, not only gold, okay. but other uh, solid minerals. Okay. But especially gold, because now the focus is on gold. Uh, I could remember if you go to Dubai today, uh, there is, uh, there is uh, in the gold souk, they call it gold souk. Okay. There is a place where they call, where they say, do you want Zamfara gold? Hmm. Yes, there is a market for Zamfara gold, which okay. tells you the level of uh, outflow of this uh, gold uh, illegally, we would want yes. to say. Yes. Uh, I think the, the, the need that is, is, that is needed now is for the government to make sure that it puts everything in order to check this. Okay, so do you see this encouraging the sale of gold by artisanal miners and SMEs? In Nigeria, yeah, sure. Okay. It will, it will, it will. You see, uh, by the time everything is packaged mm -hmm. in the central buying center, mm -hmm. where the government, uh, through uh, other bodies like about our own association, uh, is being uh, is being uh, collaborated uh, to form a, a, a form where all the that we got we buy as we miners, uh, we can come to the center, mm -hmm. sell our goods sell our wares, and I'm happy the CBN is coming into it, uh, so that at the end of the day, mm -hmm. instead of allowing the, all these uh, foreign uh, smugglers and foreign uh, saboteurs to come and take our, our gold at peanuts, we can now go and sell our gold at the world uh, ac accepted value. Mm -hmm. and, and then also there will be control of this gold. Okay. So that at the end of the day, there will be data of how much Nigeria is producing as far as gold is concerned. And also, what is the value of the gold that Nigeria is producing. So that we miners can smile back home with good, with good pay, okay. good pricing. Mm -hmm. And at some time, the government will now say, yes, we have a data of our level of production in terms of gold and other minerals. All right, before I let you go, yes. uh, COVID-19 is still with us yes and uh, the lockdowns have affected so many businesses yes. what's the situation with mining in nigeria yeah, we are all part and parcel of the of the effect the impact of covid 19 uh, has really devastated our activity okay. uh, if you could remember just be, uh, at, the, at the advent of the of the of the pandemic i had to make a, an announcement asking most, um, all our uh, members to stay away from the mining sites so that we can comply with uh, the rules and regulations of the NCDC, uh, isolation, self-isolation, distancing, and other uh, medical uh, directives so that we stay away from, from the uh, pandemic. All right. Okay, uh, I'll take another question again, Mr. Kankara. Yes. Um, tell us what, how well positioned your association is to this new development of mining our own gold in Nigeria? Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, we are positioned. Okay. But I wouldn't want to say well positioned. Okay. And we are now asking for government 
to position us well okay. in this in this uh, how will government position by carrying us along okay because we are the miners we are the the producers so government can give us all should give us all the necessary encouragement all the necessary support so that the, the collaboration can 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 yield a better result than what we are having today all right thank you very much mr uh, Mohamed Kankara, the President, Miners Association of Nigeria, for your thoughts with us on Business Express today. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much. The dollar held on to gains against most currencies as worries that a resurgence in the coronavirus pandemic is starting to curb economic activity. Let's see the exchange rate. Farmers in Nigeria will continue to have access to quality and affordable fertilizer following the successes recorded through the Presidential Fertilizer Initiative. Under the initiative, the country is today housing more than 24 fertilizer blending plants, producing and distributing more than 2 million tons of the farming inputs. Musa Baba Aliu reports that the Presidential Initiative has addressed corruption in the fertilizer value chain. It has been a long time when issues relating to siphoning, diversion, even cases of racketeering in the distribution of fertilizer made headlines or discussed in the media. This is because of the policy put in place by the federal government, which has successfully removed middlemen from the distribution chain. These agriculturists say contributed largely to increase in the yield per hectare being recorded by farmers nationwide to further strengthen the policy. The National Assembly has enacted a law which the President has signed to prescribe punishment for those engaged in selling fake and adulterated fertilizer to farmers. Penalty is seven years imprisonment without an option of fine because it is highly, highly criminal for somebody to sell fertilizer to our unsuspecting farmers, a fertilizer that is deficient in plant nutrients, fertilizer that is adulterated, misbranded or unbranded, or even divert fertilizer. Reports across the country indicate that the price of fertilizer remains 5,500 naira, as agreed between the federal government and producers. To further shed light on the impact of the Presidential Fertilizer Initiative on the economy is a member of the committee, Gideon Negedu. You're welcome to Business Express. Thank you. All right. So let's start by having you explain to us the presidential um, fertilizer initiative and how it is impacting the economy. Uh, thank you very much. The presidential fertilizer initiative is the brainchild of uh, President Muhammad Buhari. Okay. And um, it came at a very apt time. What it sought to do was to help Nigeria to be able to produce the kind of fertilizers that we require here in Nigeria. Okay. Before now, we imported uh, what I would call generic fertilizers, general fertilizers. Okay. Uh, in fertilizer, we are trying to address a specific deficiency. Mm -hmm. But we bring a one cure all solution and okay. say, you know, that is supposed to solve all the problems for farmers. Mm -hmm. But what the president has been able to do, working with the Fertilizer Association of Nigeria, FEPSAN, is to be able to stimulate local production of fertilizer as okay. part of his green 
um, alternative or the agricultural promotion policy mm -hmm. of the president. Uh, today, I, I heard in your report, uh, you said 24 blending plants. We started this uh, program or this uh, project with about um, 11 blending plants. Today, we're pleased to announce that we have 35 production plants in Nigeria today. Mm -hmm. And these plants uh, came up just within the space of, uh, of uh, four years that this um, initiative started. They are all private sector investments, investing because the environment is right. Okay. In terms of the impact, the impact has been huge. Nigeria's installed capacity used to be about 2 million tons of fertilizer per annum for blended fertilizer, NPK fertilizers. Mm. Today, we have 5.1 million tons and counting because we have more investments coming in to, to invest in, uh, in our capacity to blend fertilizer. So farmers mm. can be sure of getting the right quality, the right kind of fertilizer. Okay, uh, would you say um, the fertilizer value chain is yes. helping uh, the job creation that the federal government is concerned about? Of course, the, 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 the job creation uh, potential and what has actually been uh, generated by virtue of this investment is huge. In the fertilizer plants themselves, you have a lot of direct jobs that have been created. Uh, but more interestingly for us, it is the indirect jobs that are created around the fertilizer plants. Okay. Uh, so you have plants running at three shifts. Mm -hmm. So you have a lot of labor requirements around the plant. Also, the microeconomy around the plant has also been stimulated. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I also want to, to make some emphasis about the plants that uh, 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 are performing in the blending in the PFI. Okay. Some of these are moribund plants that were dead before. And because they've been revived, uh, small micro-industrial towns have been, you know, have, have sprung up around these blending plants mm -hmm. and there's a lot of activities around those plants. So the, the overriding impact of, uh, of, of the initiative is huge okay. and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and very welcome. So how uh, is the fertilizer distribution in this period where there's COVID-19 yes. and restriction of movements? Is there any issues with fertilizer distribution for farmers? Well, um, uh, uh, unfortunately, um, the fertilizer space has not been entirely immune from the problems of um, COVID-19. Okay. Uh, one of the major um, um, challenge has been in the area of logistics, okay. particularly in moving raw materials in the, s in the southern part of the country up to the various uh, blending plants across the country. Uh, we have a lot of plants in the far north where these products have to be trucked to. Unfortunately, we had a lot of restrictions in moving these trucks and getting them there. Uh, under the chairmanship of um, Governor Abubakar Badaru, the Governor of His Excellency, the Governor of Jigawa State, um, the PFI was proactive enough to bring in raw materials on time. Okay. Unfortunately, our timeline lapsed into when we had this um, COVID-19. Mm -hmm. But we've got very good support from the Presidential Tax Force on COVID-19. Mm -hmm. uh, the Nigerian Governors Forum, they've been very supportive to try and help us because you have a lot of, you had a lot of interstate um, restrictions uh, in movement, but we, we, we are seeing an easing of that right now and okay. more blending plants are getting materials. All right, what's uh, the demand for fertilizer in the country and then what is your output? Well, the demand of, for fertilizer in Nigeria is tricky because the demand is, seems to be driven more by, by, by what is available. Okay. So if we go by consumption, um, um, Nigeria consumes, has the highest f consumption we have done so far is about 1.5 million tons. Okay. Interestingly, this, this consumption figure was achieved under the Presidential Fertilizer Initiative. Before now, our consumption figure was somewhere around a million tons. Okay. But if just the first year that we started this initiative, we, we, we were already at 1.5 uh, uh, million tons. But it's our conviction that as we, as we ensure that the distribution networks uh, is improved, mm. we will see increase in that, uh, in that uh, demand or consumption. Okay. Yes. 
All right, we have to end the discussion here at this time. Thank you, Thank you very much, Mr. Gideon Negedu, yeah. member of the Presidential Fertilizer Initiative, yes. for your time with us today on Business Express. Thank you. Okay, looking at stocks now, the NSC All Share Index on the Nigerian Stock Exchange depreciated this Friday by 0.17% to close at 24,287.66 basis points. Market capitalization dropped to 12.669 trillion naira from uh, the weekly 13 trillion naira. Investors exchanged 160 million shares valued at 1.472 billion naira in 2,997 deals. Custodian, Japao Oil and Nigerian breweries were the toast of investors as they traded the highest volume of shares this Friday. And this is where we end this episode of the program. Don't forget you can access this and all other previous episodes on YouTube and you can communicate with us on Twitter. The handle is at NTA News Now. The hashtag is BizX. Join us again on Monday for another package and as we continue to fight COVID-19 remember to keep social distance and always wash your hands with soap under running water. Until then, I am Muplang Dakok. <laughs>